Uh, so fourth question here, what mental health resources are available in college? Uh, this one hits me personally. It's, it's a difficult topic to talk mental health. Difficult to bring up, difficult to address, uh, even to mention other people, mention to a doctor. Uh, so my freshman year of college, I keep mentioning Pitt because obviously a lot happened there. Um, between the, the grades, between the distractions of meeting new people, um, getting sick with mono, all that stuff, to pile on top of that, I also found myself feeling kind of depressed. And I always thought it was a weird thing. I thought, I felt a little bit in high school too, senior year of high school, and our school does a class trip to Disney every year. And I remember thinking to myself before the trip, you know, I'm feeling a little depressed, but this trip to Disney, there's gonna be no distractions, all my friends will be there. This will snap me right out of it. And depression doesn't really work that way. And I'm not trying to turn this into a, I have depression, this is what it is. But my experience, you get to college, you think, all right, maybe this will snap me out of it. And maybe going out and having fun with friends will snap me out of it. But it, it doesn't come to that. It, it's something you need to address, something you need to take care of. And partway through, I mentioned to my parents, which was a tough conversation to have because they see you one way, but internally you feel another way where the way I described it was it felt like I was in the passenger seat of my own life. You know, everything kept going. You don't really notice everything fully going around you. Um, so I decided to finally bring it up to my parents and they, of course, fully supportive. I don't think they were going to yell at me for saying, hey, this is how I feel. Um, but I mentioned it to them and they helped me find resources at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, I started off by going and seeing a, a, a therapist there, a counselor, who talked to me for a, a session, found out what was going on, had me take a couple tests. Nothing no needles, so I was fine with that. Uh, nothing too painful, you know, how do you feel during this day? Do you ever feel like hurting yourself, which I never did, but they ask you all these questions because they have to. They have to make sure you're, you're feeling the way that you say you are. And eventually they came out and said, yeah, we do think you have depression. So they gave me some medication, which I still take to this day, and it takes a little bit of time to work, but after two, three weeks of taking the medicine, you finally start feeling a little bit better. And on top of that, they also recommended I went and see a, uh, a separate therapist, one person to just talk to. And, you know, I'm away from home. I was hours away in Pennsylvania where I grew up in Massachusetts. And speaking to this person, even if it was, uh, you know, I'm struggling finding all these different connections or I'm having a tough time connecting with the people around me or the Patriots lost last night, everyone's giving me crap. It's very stressful to me. Just talking about that stuff, even though it might sound silly to you, even though it might sound difficult to do, just talking to them. They're not going to judge you. It's their job to help you and listen. That was extremely helpful as well. And to this day, I still see a person not as often as I would at school. I would go every week because those resources were available. Most of the time, they're free. You just set up an appointment uh, if you have a referral. But making sure that you take advantage of those resources as hard as it is to do. Um, that's the most important recommendation you can have, even if it means exercising to help you snap out of it or going and seeking help like I did or telling someone. Mm -hmm. Telling is a big thing as well. And as, as we all know, you know, people sometimes in college more often than it should succumb to the depression, so succumb to the stress, um, which is obviously a horrible thing because you see all the time people say, just ask how someone's doing. Well, in this case, ask how someone's doing because half the time I didn't want to say how I was doing because I sometimes I'm an extrovert sometimes I'm an introvert I don't think that's possible but I'm sure I'm one of the one of the other but sometimes someone could be quiet because that's who they are sometimes they could be quiet because they want to talk to someone and just reach out so seeking those mental health opportunities getting help taking medicine some people out there hate medicine but Sometimes it helps, sometimes it's necessary. You know, I, I feel like I'm a completely different person. I don't feel like I'm in the passenger seat anymore now. And this all happened in college. It had nothing to do with the college itself. I loved Pitt, loved Middlesex, loved UMass. But it's just something that, it just happens. Depression, anxiety, all these things. Just seek the help. That's, and the help is certainly there as well. And I think knowing your resources on campus is important, yeah. um, and you can easily find it on their website. Uh, just if you look up the health clinic, uh, they have a bunch of online things. I 
um, actually looked up URIs and they have a assessment, uh, anonymous assessment test you can take um, to kind of not diagnose yourself, but just see like where you're at. Um, and it's a professional that gives you your feedback to you, but it's kind of a way to do it where you don't have to go into a clinic and talk to a person one-on-one because that can be intimidating sometimes, but also important. Um, so maybe, you know, you take the test, you figure out if, you know, you're at a place where maybe you want to go talk to a professional and it kind of helps you that way. It's also um, good to know what's available in case there's something tragic that happens, like the loss of a loved one. Um, my freshman year of college was the Newtown shooting, and there was a student who lived with me in the same dorm, and he was from the area, and he just, I saw him at the first, the day that it happened, and he just looked so upset, and I think, <clears throat> I don't personally know if he went to the counseling, but that was available to him. And they made sure it was known. And I was there for the Boston Marathon bombing. And I was so upset with that because I know so many people who go down to the finish line. I know a lot of first responders in Boston. And I was, I had already booked an appointment with the counseling. And I went in there and they're like, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, I can't talk about anything right now because I, I don't know how to process this. And <clears throat> if there's a situation like that, like, it's good to seek out the counseling in your area. Sometimes yeah. people, um, if there's a tragedy, like if every once in a while, unfortunately, if a student passed away that happened my first week of college, they'll bring in extra counselors to be available to students, or they'll tell you what a good helpline to call is, a local um, an anonymous helpline that you can call and talk to. Um, and all of that information is readily available. And if it's not, if you don't know where to find it, you can seek out your, one of your professors. You can seek out um, someone in any department of the school, um, at, of any staff member, an RA, uh, um, if you have a peer advisor, one of them, or even just going to sort of the building you think the counseling office might be in and be like, hey, where do I find help? It's readily available. And they want, in college, they want you to reach that help. And a lot of times it is like, Mackenzie said free so take advantage of that while it is free while it's available for you so you can start to learn those coping mechanisms and so that if you need to take advantage of them you know how to find them and you know where to find them and even after college you know it can help you figure out like okay this is what I need I need counseling or I need medication or I need to find this per this type of person this type of help and it will help you orient yourself with what you need um, and it's all readily available yeah, I think uh, we've all kind of touched on depression as a, a giant topic, but mental health is a vast array of different types of disabilities. So, I mean, even um, health, uh, like eating disabilities. Uh, my friend, uh, for example, in college had a very addictive personality. So when we met him, he was very much into video games and it would be times where like, hey, we need to go out, let's go out on night on the town type deal. And he was like, no, I have a raid. Like, I need to, I need to be here in this seat. Um, I get it. There's people on the other end that are relying on you. But at the same time, as you mentioned, passenger, uh, mm -hmm. he's, he's missing all these opportunities that are happening right here, right around him. Uh, and he had a very unique situation happen where we kind of had an intervention type deal, sat down with him. So he, he decided that he was going to, um, start working away from that but then he got into a unhealthy addiction to running mm -hmm. uh, and then it became an unhealthy addiction into dancing uh, so he his personality just kind of grips onto things yeah. and works through it but now he's um, he's working in uh, industry where it's kind of funny but uh, it's a slot machine uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, he's there. He's seeking uh, the you know help yeah. to this day, and he's gotten a, a, a lot better since the ten years that I've known him now, twelve years. Uh, so, I mean, the one thing we keep bringing up too is that the resources are available, and that's not only true for college. I know yeah. the question was specific to college, but in high school, you can go out and you can reach out to a counselor. John mentioned talking to somebody, anybody, mm -hmm. or having, if you're just sitting around and you notice somebody, just they, they, yep. they're they off and you, you can sense that, go up and talk to them. It's, it's a huge deal when somebody comes over and just expresses that they're concerned about you and you have that, that mm -hmm. talk with them. And it could, could potentially save somebody's life. It's uh, absolutely unreal. Yeah. Um, and then... The other thing I want to bring up too is that if you're not comfortable going to a counselor or going anywhere, uh, mentalhealth.gov has just a whole slew of information and you can find anything on there and, and really work through it. 
Going back to your story about your friend, I also know counselors can help people who have friends who are having issues. So you can kind of go to them if you're a friend. Um, You can see that there's issues, and they can help you help your friend through the situation. That way, if the friend is not willing to go see someone, you can kind of be there as an emotional support if you don't know how to handle the situation, which can be difficult for a college kid. I'm really glad you brought up addiction because that is an issue that goes rampant in college um, as well as um, domestic abuse, not necessarily um, always violence, but you know, emotional abuse too. I knew, uh, I had a friend in college who was in an emotionally abusive relationship and I was like, I don't know how to help this person. So, <clears throat> Susan, I ended up getting out of the relationship before it escalated too much. But at the same time, there are, like you said, um, you, you just need to seek out, like, if, even if it's not you, go find you know, a counselor and be like, what can I do to help this person get out of it? Um, and it doesn't necessarily, it, it's, it can be anonymous too, if you, if, you, if you need it to be. If you're like, I don't know how to, to say this sort of thing, you, there are ways to, to help them without necessarily like, pushing them and things like that. And it's, that's always a fear is trying to help and being pushed out too, I feel like. Um, and like you said, like you can be the mental health resource for a friend um, if you notice that they're especially you're if you're in a forced triple and you notice one of your roommates is a bit off for in some way they're always going to parties or they're not talking to anyone that that's a real issue is it alcohol is addiction issue. is a huge issue in college yeah. that never gets addressed really because they're like oh it's just the college thing but it you can address that with your friends and be like look I noticed that you're you're going to parties a lot you're not going to class you're always hung over like this is an issue and it's a very difficult conversation to have but it's an important one too we got so dark here but this is very important yeah this is very important for for college and this is i'm kind of i'm really glad we got this dark in this series because this is super important for college and like no one ever talks about it and it's like but the biggest issue is we can talk about it but the biggest thing is seeing it or experiencing it. And you'll notice that once you get to college or if you're already at college. Um, as you mentioned, friends can be your biggest support group there. Uh, even though the college could offer free resources, free counseling, free group therapy, that was another thing that they offered. It wasn't my cup of tea, but it is something that you can do. Uh, even just unplugging, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, just unplug. If you need to sit yourself in your room for an hour, Close the door, kick your two roommates out if you need to, or if you're lucky enough to have a single, just sit in that room and enjoy your time unplugged from it all. Take away from the stress, take away from all the influences coming at you, all the influencers. Um, and I think as well, once you finally come to grips with the fact that there is a, an addiction, a depression, an anxiety, something along those lines, that's where you truly start to see who your fake friends are versus your true friends. Because if you're locking yourself in your room for an hour, two hours a day, that's not the healthiest thing. But if you do it for a day, uh, those fake friends will be pushing, wondering where the hell you are. The real friends will completely understand and talk to you after you're out of it or while you're in there. Um, So definitely keep that in mind. The friends can be one of the biggest helps in this mental health uh, journey. You, uh, you bring up a good point, too, about uh, locking yourself in the room and being in there uh, alone for X amount of time. And one of my closest friends to this day is uh, very much an introvert and was when we were in college. And so we would always try to get him out. Mm-hmm. But we did have one friend that was more of <laughs> the fake friend where whenever he would lock himself in the room, just really didn't want to deal with people. And we knew that he needed his, mm-hmm. his time to just kind of decompress and relax. Uh, he would bang on the door and start yelling and trying to get him out. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, we're still friendly, uh, but it's, he's not one of my like, yeah. cl- close, close buddies. Uh, and it's important, yeah, to recognize, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you see somebody that, even if it's not in your friend group, but mm-hmm. you just know that something's off, it, it could be, uh, you know, life-changing to go out and talk to them and see what's up. The other thing, too, though, is be there, but don't be there you know, the whole time, you know, give, give them the space they need. Don't be overbearing. Don't be shoving it in their face. Cause just like if you're drinking and someone says you're drunk, that's the most annoying thing in the world to hear. If you're feeling down and someone says you're down, I can tell that's not that helpful either. Just be there, you know, let them come to you or offer. Offer is just as big as anything. Yeah. Instead of saying specifically, you're down, we need to do this. 
be like, you seem really upset. What do you need from me? What can I do for you? Um, rather than that. And you mentioned friends, and that's, that's a really mm-hmm. important part. And I noticed sort of as I, especially in junior year, I sort of switched friend groups because I noticed that the friends around me weren't listening to what I needed. So it was a situation where they were drinking on campus. I said, I'm an RA now. I don't really feel comfortable doing this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be involved in this. I might get called into work. And they're like, no, 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 do it, do it, do it. And then I got called into work and I was like, well, it's a good thing I didn't. And then like they kept pushing. And then the newer friend group that I got into, I was like, I don't feel comfortable with this. I'm like, okay, we'll, we won't push you to do that. They did their own thing too. Um, but at the same time, they weren't pushing me and they, they you need to make sure that your friends listen to you and what you need and if they're not listening to you and what you say you need it is something that's going to be good for you so if you're saying like if you've been locked in your room for a week um and you're not sick that's or anything, not what i'm talking yeah no no i know no but no <laughs> don't but like, do that no but if you've been locked in your room for a week saying i i need space i need space and you don't mm. need space you need to be around people and they're like um no this is what you're doing is unhealthy you're going to come and you're going to talk to us about what's wrong I, if that's you know what's been happening I hadn't seen my friends in like a month and they're like you're gonna come hang out with us for one night and I needed that yeah. and I, I was like no you know I'm fine I'm fine but I, I wasn't fine and I needed that so if your friends listen to you in different ways and like have that connection like look for that in your friends um, <clears throat> instead of like you said like them telling you like this is what's wrong with you this is what you need mm-hmm. having them like listen to you and listen to you in different ways too um, so that, you know, just finding that connection can be the biggest mental health resource is just surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you and who are going to help you, um, like who are going to lift you instead of pushing you. One other thing just randomly popped in my head because I know right now, for example, my grandmother's going through chemotherapy treatment, which is a side note, but my dad and myself as well really needed some emotional support groups as well. And Some people aren't this way, some people are, but going and finding a church, finding religion on campus. Some campuses are super religious, Jesuit colleges or something. I I don't know, the ones I went to weren't like that. But, um, you know, every college has a chapel or a temple or a church on there. And sometimes just going on a Sunday, sometimes going to confession, sometimes just praying every day. That also helps with your mental health. And don't be ashamed to do it if you're the only one who's praying in your friend group because... It's, it's about your mental health. Just take care of what you need to do. Going back to the friends for a second, when I uh, went abroad, I was going by myself. I didn't know anybody in the program going over at the, when I first started going through the application process. And I was so sure I could do it by myself. I was like, I'm really confident. I'm really excited. And then the weeks before, um, I started to get a lot of anxiety about it because I was like, yeah. 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 Like, I'm going to a foreign country I've never been to by myself. Um, and so I ended up finding out that my friend from school had also, uh, we weren't that close, but she was also applying to the program and she was going to be there. And we ended up living together while abroad. And she was like the best thing for me over there because I don't, I probably wouldn't have made it through the semester abroad without her. Um, uh, yeah, it was really hard to be that far away from family and in a place you've never been before. People have no idea who they are. Um, so friends was the that was the greatest thing about going abroad. And even uh, just like if you're in college and you're feeling alone or whatever, that we live in the time where you can just pop on your phone yep. and do Skype. You can do what um, FaceTime, whatever it is, and talk to somebody, um, somebody that you trust. I know that's one thing is especially when you're in a new place and you, you don't know people, it's kind of hard to let them in. But uh, reaching out to somebody that you know specifically and talking about your issues and problems and getting over it so